that's where the cam chain slot is, so it goes three, two, one from left to right. So you have the cam chain here. That was spark plug number three, cylinder three, spark plug two, cylinder two, spark plug one, cylinder one. So if you were sitting on the motorcycle looking forward, it would be opposite or the same rotated 180 degrees. The number one cylinder would be on your left hand and number three would be on your right, which makes sense if you're counting left to right. But we're looking in the opposite direction here. So three, two, one. And we're going to have to put cylinder one at top dead center for the next step. This reminds me of when I was taking physics in college and it would take three hours to read one page and you had to read 20 pages by the next day. So we're finally down to step three right here. Remove the timing mark accessing bolt one and the crankshaft pin cover two. Right here, number one and number two. Here's the timing mark accessing bolt and the crankshaft end cover. For the timing mark accessing bolt, we need a five millimeter. Like it has a copper washer in here. The crankshaft end cover is a 14 millimeter. I gotta rotate this down so I can get a good angle at it. I wish I just had a regular 14 because look at all this slop in this system and plus it's hanging way out. On my Suzuki it actually stripped this out. It was like, so I'm hoping this one's not super tight. So I'm going to push in really hard with my right hand and try to keep everything. Well, I thought that was way easier than I thought. I was expecting a huge battle. All right. go. There's a little o-ring right here. I try my fingernail first instead of this sharp tool. So I didn't need the sharp tool because you don't want to scratch this else it won't seal properly. Looks like it was doing its job to keep the dirt out. So the o-ring just went in there like that. This is where a q-tip comes in handy. Squirt a little simple green on your Q-tip. And a final wipe with a rag. So I put this motorcycle into extreme wheelie mode. It's totally awesome. Like I'm six feet tall and right here is right where the camshafts are. And down here is that cover we just took off. So I can roll right in here like this. I can roll right in here like this. I can roll. <laughs> I can roll right in here like this, and it's exactly where I want. I would hate to be all hunched over down here like this, trying to do this job with this all at a funny angle. Anyway, these stands were eight hundred dollars, and I did a lot of research. I thought it would be better than like a track stand for what I'm doing. You can get both the wheels off at the same time. And you can also, I have the front forks off. So it's been very versatile. So let's get back to work now. I'll need a 19 millimeter to turn the crankshaft counterclockwise. For now, I'm gonna try this extension. Let's go in there like that. We gotta turn it. That extension was sticking out too hard, too far. So I found something better. This is just a 3 8 to half inch adapter. So I put my 3 8 socket on here. 
and then I have a half drive 19 millimeter socket that I can put on there. And that's better because it doesn't stick out so far. So now I can turn the engine counterclockwise. That would be the direction of rotation. See how that spun it goes along and it all of a sudden it spins. I'll explain why that spinning is relevant. Now that we're able to turn the crankshaft counterclockwise, we can put number one piston at top dead center on the compression stroke. And we'll align the top dead center mark A on the generator rotor with the gener rotor, generator rotor cover mark B. So right in here. So we have to spin this until we can find this line. Um, I was reading in one forum where you saw that spinning action. The guy could never find the line because it all of a sudden would spin past that mark. So probably what I'm going to do instead of use a ratchet is I'm going to use a breaker bar eventually. So anyway, they don't give you a very big hole to look into right here. I'm probably going to try to set up the camera and shine a light in there. Anyway, you find the flat line, the flat line in here when cylinder one is at top dead center by turning this. Like I was showing you before it, you know, if you turn that there and you can watch the camshaft lobes turning up here. I'm turning this with my hand and you'll see how it all of a sudden goes really fast. So right now it's pushing the spring down. And now the spring pops back up. Okay, let's watch what's going on here. So the left one's going down. The right one's kind of approaching at nine o'clock. Then it goes really fast. Now the right one's going down. And it's going to spin really fast on me. And then we're starting to point opposite. Now I should probably start looking for the mark. I can't believe I found it on the first try, but I went past just maybe a sixteenth to eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go through one more cycle and come back around. So the intake valves are on the right and the exhaust valves are on the left. So when the piston's at top dead center on the compression stroke, both valves are closed. That would be when the air fuel mixture is compressed and the spark plug fires and forces the piston down. So when the piston comes out, it should push the exhaust gases out the exhaust valve. So let's see what that, if that's what happens. The left lobe should open the left valve, the exhaust valve. So if I'm correct, this left one, oh, I can see it. It's opening the exhaust valve. It's letting the exhaust out. And then the exhaust valve closes. And if you can look at the right one, it's going to open the intake valve to let the air fuel mixture in. It's pressing that valve open. And then when it, then it goes, now they're both closed. And this is when I should be approaching top dead center on the compression stroke on cylinder number one. So now I'm shining my light in this hole here to see if I can see the mark up here. See, I might have gone past it. So let's try again. Let me pause it. Let me get the lobes pointing away from each other again. So there's two marks. One has a dash, and that's one, the one you line up and you, when you're bringing your fueler gauge in here to check this clearance, which we're going to do in the next video. That's the line. And I'm going to show you that. That's where we were. But if you come over here, and we, when we finally get to removing the camshafts, um, there's actually a triangle that you see in there, and that's before top dead center 125 on the compression stroke. Um, so we'll go over this a little bit more later, but I'm going to just see if I can see the triangle come up before the dash. So I did some spinning off camera to find the dash and the triangle. And so right here, this is when cylinder number one is at top dead center on the compression stroke. 
on the dashed line. That's where you do the checking with the filler gauge. And you can see this lobe is pointed up. I'd say that's like two o'clock. The other one is pointing the other way, but it, it's not exactly quite two o'clock like this one. This one's, if you look straight at it, maybe 215, it's hard to tell exactly, but this one here, yeah, it might be the opposite, kind of like 930. So some of that past part might have been filmed in Zoom, two times Zoom, but anyway, there's my breaker bar, and I got it connected to this ratchet. I'm just choking up on it here. And... Um, See, that way I can get better control. That's like two feet long, but I'm kind of grabbing it at about a foot and pushing down carefully. And then I'm looking inside this hole, which I already showed you. So it helped to notice where that one lobe is pointing up at around two o'clock because when I'm sneaking up on this guy here, I can kind of look up there and I'm only at, that would be three o'clock. So I'm getting close. Let's see. It doesn't, when you're coming up to the dash line, it doesn't get away with you as much as long as you're careful because there's no pressure on the, at that point. There it is. So line that up. Anyway, I found it there. And like I said, it's around two o'clock there. So when it looks like this, I should be getting close to where I need to look for the triangle at 125 before top dead center. So that's where it's a good idea to get rid of that ratchet because it does try to spin really quickly past the mark. So the intake lobe is at about this orientation when you're at the 125 degrees before top dead center, whereas at top dead center, it was at the two o'clock. So here is the triangle mark. You take a little bit at about two o'clock and the mark and the mark, you can see the dash. You can see the dash right there. So I'm sneaking at, up on that uh, 125 degrees before top dead center, and you can see why the it flies past the triangle on you, because you, you're coming up and you want it to be at that one position I just showed you, and you get there, and all of a sudden, you'll see it just takes off. And it, it could spin past. That's about where it should be, but it might be here. So let me go around two times to get back to where I was. Actually, so there both the valves are closed. Now I gotta go around two times again. There's the exhaust valve opening. Now you got the intake valve opening on the right. So now they're both closed. And then you'd be coming up to the 125 degrees before top dead center somewhere in here. And then the top dead center was about like that. So I'm trying to find the 125 degree before top dead center. So I'm doing a little reality check here. I have this set at the 125 degrees before top dead center mark. So I set up a protractor and that would be 90 degrees there. So I made these little indicators at 125. So hopefully if I put this in here,
and rotate it down to 125. I should be at the mark. Hopefully this socket doesn't fall off. It's barely on there. So I'm just going to stop shy of that and look in the hole. I've just got to move it a little bit more and I should be right there. So I'll take this out here. And I'll take this thing I made off, put it back on the same spot. And I'm going to get my flashlight and look in the hole. Okay, I don't see it yet, so I should be able to just move this a little bit and the line should show up, hopefully. There it is, right there. So considering my crude popsicle stick protractor thing, you know, I'm sure I did, I was only off by that much, but I'm sure that's just the way it was set up. So that's a pretty good reality check. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna put some pictures in the uh, description area of the video, close-ups on what the lobes look like at certain positions. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop there for today, and then tomorrow I'm going to get the feeler gauges out and we can actually check this.